Hi guys, welcome back to Fishing in the UK. Today we're going to be float fishing from the shore. I'm hoping to catch three different species on the float and hopefully get them on film for you guys to see. So let's see how it goes. This is what I'm using today. Float. Three foot trace and a head hook ragworm. Just gonna give this a little flick out. See what we can get. The first fish of the day. So I am a little rockling. Pop them back, see if we can get another one. So, this is species number two. Nice little coli. And it's definitely a coli because see the lateral line there? Goes straight down. If it was a pollock, it would be curved at the top there. But that's species number two on the float. We'll chuck it back, see if we can get species number three today. So, got another little coli, as you can see. Look, please, no, I want to stop. Not a bad little size. And again. <laughs> We'll chuck it back, hopefully get a different species this time. Species number three. 
Ooh. Little coddle in there. So that's be challenged completed. A three species all on the float from the shore. We'll give it another couple of hours, see if we can get any more. This is number four. So, um, I do believe it's a long spine sea scorpion. So, <laughs> that species number four. Excellent stuff, chuck them back, see if we can get another one. So far, I've had four species. Um, the first one was a three beard rockland, the second one was a coli, the third one was a codlin, and the fourth one was a long spine sea scorpion. Um, I still haven't a RAS yet. Uh, there's still about an hour of daylight left so hopefully within the next hour I'll have a RAS. If not, we'll have to try again tomorrow. Well guys, that's four species I've had today on the float. Um, the first one was a three-bearded rockland, the second one was a coli, the third one was a codlin, and the fourth one was a long spine sea scorpion. Um, it's gonna start getting dark now and I forgot to bring me headlight with us, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up, continue this tomorrow, hopefully catch some more species on the float. Pop them 
buck. Whoop. We finished pocket. <laughs> Here's one crab, quite nice. Okay, softy. Soft, that's good then. Here's another one. Yes. Okay, lovely bait for eels and for blackfish. Why? There we go, that's the same setup I had on yesterday. Float. A little bit crap for bait, a big monkey eel. Can I get an R on it? Oh my god, that is just wrong, that. Oh. <laughs> Wrap yourself around my arm. Right, so we're back at Whitburn on the rocks, as you can see. Um, we're going to be fishing the flood. Hopefully, the, as the water comes in, it's going to bring some wrasse in for her. Um, I didn't catch any wrasse the first day I was here, so I'm hoping for one today. Um, but, I mean, if we don't catch a wrasse, I'm not too fussed. We'll see what else we can catch. Right, guys, I'm going to show you how to set this float up. If you're setting it up straight out of the packet, pretty much this is how you do it. So what you want to do is, you want to take your bead, thread that onto your main line. That's there. Next, take your float. Careful not to put it on upside down. Just thread that through the middle. So this is just your main line going straight through. So it comes out the other end. Slide that up. Next, you want to put your weight on. So put the weight straight through like that. Up to there. Next, you want a bead on. The bead is just to cushion the weight from the swivel. That goes on like that. Next, what you want to do is you want to put your swivel on that come in the box. I've already tied a slewed on there, obviously off yesterday. Um, just that's just a short length of weaker line than my main line. It just so happens that that is eight pound, eight pound mono. So you attach your swivel to that. Your tag end off. Basically, like I said, the main reason why you've got a thinner line here is so if you get snagged on the bottom, this hook length will snap, so you'll only lose your hook, but you'll still be left with this. So that's how you put it on. That's the main setup. Also, it comes with elastic band, so the elastic band is pretty much you just tie that on. I just put mine on like that, straight through, pull it. And what happens with this is basically it just stops your float. It's like it sets the depth of the float. So if you want it shorter, obviously you want to have it closer to the float. And that way when your water, when your line hits the water, it drops in. That'll stop and that'll be the depth that you're fishing. So as you can see here, it's fishing the rock. So if you wanted to fish closer to the rocks, to the to the bottom, you would lengthen this, lengthen that there like that. This would hit the water. The float would rise up to that, and that would be on the bottom. 
can say that. So as the tide comes in, you want to be fishing deeper. As the tide goes out, you want to be putting this more shallow so it floats above the bottom and hopefully you won't get snagged. And that is pretty much how you set your float up for sea fishing. So, exactly the same setup as yesterday, what we're using. Head hook ragworm. Hopefully today we'll catch a wrasse. First fish of the day. It's not a new species, but it's a little coddling. There we go. Nice little kelpie. Took it back, see if we can get another one. I'm going to move my elastic band back down the line. So from there, about a foot. And then that'll give us a bit extra depth for the bait to get closer to the bottom. The whole point of having the elastic band is so you can just wind in and it'll go through your tip eyes. So once it's up there, just give it a little flick a little flick that's all you need and there you go if that was lying flat it would mean that the weight was touching the floor and the line was too long so if that happens all you do just adjust the elastic band again and it'll make it better for you right um, I've tried ragworm I've obviously had that little coddling now what I'm going to do is put a little crab on because I know rats are fond of crabs um, so I'm just going to try this I'm going to hook it through its back socket like so, in one end and out the other. That's all I'm going to do. Put it on like that. Just going to give it a little flick. Out of there. Hopefully that'll pick us a wrasse up. So guys, as you've seen from the video, you can use your float um, to catch a load of different species. Um, obviously you can catch more species than what I've caught on this video, but it's great fun using a float. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you soon.